Right, I think we're live. So welcome again to one of our Facebook Live sessions. This week we're talking about balancing and why it's so important and what it really is. I'm joined by uh, Kim, Rob and Richard again. Thank you guys for your time. Um, if you want to just introduce yourselves for all the newbies that maybe haven't joined us before, um, crack on Richard. Hi, I'm Richard. I'm from Midwales Plum and Heat and Supplies. Uh, we specialise in lots of different products and we give heat and engineers training and advice. Rob. Hi. Yeah, hi, I'm, I'm, Rob. Uh, I'm, I'm Rob Berridge. Um, I'm a um, heating designer these days um, and I'm one of the directors of, uh, of Heat Engineer Software Limited. And I'm, uh, my name's Kimbo and I run the Heating Academy and I do my bit to try and explain hydronics and flow and balancing and all that sort of stuff as best I can to guys that are trying to get a little bit better at what they do. <clears throat> Brilliant. Um, like I say, thanks all so much for your time. I know you're all super, super busy. Um, so balancing, uh, system balancing. Um, let's start with what it actually means. I don't know who's best to take that one, but let's uh, let's talk about what it really is. Well, I think if you ask the general, if you ask a, uh, an installer, what 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 is he doing when he's balancing? In his mind, he's just getting the radiator hot, which, which I get because if you don't balance that side of things up, they're not all going to get hot. The back bedroom one or one with you know the smallest pipe or whatever doesn't get hot, so you need to play around with the lock shields, and that's essentially what we're doing. We're playing around with them, uh, trying to get enough hot water in each of the radiators so that the radiators get hot. But unfortunately, there's no thought given to return temperatures which is absolutely crucial uh, for condensing and there's no consideration taken for the actual amount of flow that's going into the radiator so you might have a one kilowatt rad but you might have two or three kilowatts of flow going through it because all we're bothered about is getting it hot uh, and essentially not always but quite often they're more or less the same temperature at the top as the bottom the flow the, or the velocity the speed of the water through the radiator is so fast uh that there isn't sufficient time for the water to dump itself into the room even though there's loads more water than we need uh so the temperature at the top is not far away from the temperature at the bottom and that's not good either because again we've got this return temperature issue um i think i'm sure we'll talk about what we need to do to get boilers condensing i think most people think they just condense because it says so on the side of the box but there's quite a few things we need to do uh to actually get the boiler to condense <clears throat> It in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> that's it in a nutshell excellent um yeah. so so why you know that's kind of answered part of this question too but why is it so important like now and you know energy saving and you know installers are getting phone calls from their customers telling them that they've got cold spots and that's when they go and talk about the balancing and why so so you know why is it so important on the energy front we're getting so many we're getting so many issues now with with um you know there has been some mixed messages coming out of government but one thing that is coming out of government now is that they they want to start trying to really push energy efficiency but and that is so so poignant now in the sense of you know the energy bills going you know skyrocketing 54 percent up last week last week the first of april which was um was it april mm -hmm. fuel day was it or something i think it was called something like that a bit, bit of a weird one but uh, sorry if only um, it was an april fool yeah well yeah it felt like it didn't it but it's uh not, not in your pocket and the problem is is that you know even on you know new builds etc cetera, etc cetera, now i mean there's there's you know you've probably got a three or four kilowatt requirement in the building and you're sticking a 40 kilowatt unit in there that'll only modulate down to about eight kilowatts or something like that so you're already massively oversized with everything if you're not balancing the system down or you haven't got an anti-cycle controlling on the on the boiler etc cetera, etc cetera, you you're, you're just you know you're in a world of hurt it's just going to cost you an absolute fortune in sort of post and pre-purge um you know boiler systems that that, that fire up at you know maximum output etc cetera, etc cetera. so you you, know, you you need to be getting the i think kim's saying is getting the getting the right amount of heat at the right place at the right time and that's that's basically what it's all about i mean from from my own perspective um balancing my system up properly from from uh, from you know a few a few years ago with with also with load compensation controlling etc now um i've i've knocked about 3400 kilowatt hours off of my um off of my bills a year which is a you know, mm. massive saving extortionate amount of saving mm. and how often um does the installer have to do it every is it every, something, time. every time they go to the home 
every well, every time every time that they 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 set up commission a system every time that they design a system to get to get obviously the radiators the right size i mean we're, we're we're heading towards low temp systems and eventually fossil fuels will actually be phased out you know which is which is is quite, is quite right but it's obviously there's procedure for a reason um and i think we now got to start getting ourselves or our systems heat pump ready and the way that we're going to start doing that is ensuring that we're getting these lower lower return temperatures coming back to our uh, to back to our heat sources yeah so it's like we said last week it's all about the same it's all on the same subject when we first did the first one about low flow temperatures and then last week we started about st talked about the heat loss calculation now balancing and it's all tied in together and it's really really important hey that they do all of these things and maintain them Sure. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know, kilowatts and flow are, 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 are intrinsically linked. So if you if you've done a heat loss calculation on a, on a lounge for argument's sake, and it only needs you know 800 watts or something, you need to work out exactly what that flow rate is and that that heat requirement to go to that room. Um, so you're balancing the system correctly. So I mean, like Kim says, I mean, if if um, if uh, uh, a TRV perhaps um, shuts down on, on on one of the other radiators because it's achieved temperature, it will actually start to overheat the other rooms. Or, or you know, or over, over pump the other rooms, and that's that can be a, be an issue. So if it's not balanced evenly right the way through the system, you're going to have you're going to have um, um, cycling issues quite a lot. So even if they've got even if they've got TRVs and they're set to on and off in different rooms to zone and do those sort of energy savings, the balancing still maintains for the whole system, the system as a whole. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, you know, the second law of thermodynamics means the hot will always go to cold in whatever direction. I mean, let's face it: who closes all the doors in their houses when they, when they, you know, if you've got different, different, uh, different temperatures in each room? You know, it's fine if you've got a nice sealed door, etc., and that, and you can do it. I mean, I don't, I don't particularly like um, trying to sleep in sort of twenty-one degrees. That is, a, that is, that is a standard um, design temperature these days. It's, it's far too hot for me. But. Mm. Um, but again, we don't we don't close doors, so you know I, I make the same mistake that that hot hot will go to cold. My my radiators downstairs actually start to try and heat the upstairs because I don't close doors, but I've balanced it down so they can't over pump basically. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to discuss as well. What, what I say, part of it you need to understand as well is it is you know a lot of the boiler manufacturers aren't helping us out here because some of the most popular boilers on the market actually there's no pump adjustment on them whatsoever. Yeah. So if you've ever done a solar thermal system, you soon understand how to balance a system because a solar thermal system has a pump, okay? And you select the, the correct flow rate through the solar system by adjusting the pump speed, okay? So that's critical. So once you've adjusted the pump speed, then you have a balancing valve on that solar thermal pump station and you balance that balancing valve correct to the correct flow rate that you require through the solar panels and through the coil of your your solar coil on your cylinder or buffer cylinder or whatever you've got if you've ever done one of those you'll understand how to balance it's exactly the same when we're trying to balance out a boiler or heat pump or whatever we're trying to do is exactly the same procedure we need to adjust the pump speed to the correct flow rate for the index circuit and the correct um the correct uh, kilowatt input the correct flow rate for that circuit and then what we need to then do is then fine tune the rest of the system so the rest of the system has the correct flow rate to each of its areas. If you're not, if you're not able to adjust the pump speed correctly, you, you're really going to struggle to then balance that heating circuit. And that's where certain products on the market at the moment that weren't available before, so self-balancing TRVs are starting to come through and they're starting to help the installer on, on systems where you can't adjust the, the pump to actually balance those systems effectively. That's exactly right. We, we, that's exactly right. We actually we actually start to need almost like ten and twenty kPa pumps, don't we? Not the standard fifty kPa. Yeah. Pumps. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So on a system, you've just referenced the auto balancing valves. We can come back to that in a sec. But on a system where there's just regular TRVs, like I've got on mine, um, there's a we've got a balancing key. So if you don't this pump adjustment that you're talking about, the, can it be? It can then just be done from the radiator valve with the kit to adjust the flow you need, you need setting to, on each of the TRVs. Yeah, you, 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 you still have problems though, because potentially we, we're kind of deadheading that pump a little bit and you're, you're putting a lot of, lot of pressure from that, that, that pump that hasn't, isn't necessarily proportionally pressured pump, so it doesn't adjust its own output. It's a, thick, a lot of them are still fixed speed pumps. 
and you know that it's even if you even, you can try as you might to try and balance but you're physically then having to then balance those trvs to with an an nth of their life to actually get them to to have the correct flow rate and that's really hard to achieve even even with the best valves in the world if they if it's if you can't adjust that pump speed on that boiler you you're going to be in a world of pain balancing which yeah. is why you know it's it's often a job that's maybe overlooked on occasion and the because it's well, complicated and it's well, just lots, really time consuming yeah Do lots you, of installers don't even think it's poss possible because because of the issues with the with the you know not not able to adjust the pump speed on some of the boilers out there or set them up, you know, dynamically. A lot of boilers, some boilers do. I mean, if you go through Worcester Bosch boilers, they they actually have a proportional setting, but you still have to set that proportional setting at the correct setting. Out the box, it, it it's never going to be at the correct setting. And there's, and like with intergas boilers, for instance, you 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 can set the upper pump speed and the lower pump speed based on the kilowatt input of the burner. So when the burner's at a higher um, input rate, the pumps at the correct speed to distribute that energy through the heating circuit and as it comes down in kilowatt rating the pump speed adjusts itself down to give you less flow rate through the heating circuit so some boilers can do it but there's a lot out there that can't do it and those are the boilers where a lot of the time that myself rob and kim hear about the installers complaining that look we can't we can't balance these systems and and part of i think the understanding and the misconception about balancing is just because it's really hard to do on some of the systems that are out there just because the installers don't have the tools to do that if we look at a knock -on, if we look at a knock-on effect of that if the pumps pump it let's say for example the pump is pumping the appropriate amount of kilowatts but it's pumping at twice the flow rate or twice the velocity so there's, there's far more there's twice the flow that we need okay but it's still the right amount of kilowatts coming out if we've got twice the flow, the mass then tells you you've only got half the DT. So our DT that should be 20, so technically it's 70 flow, 50 return. Our DT now is saying that we've got 70 flow and 60 return. And what that's doing, it's, it's pushing our boiler further and further and further and further away from condensing. We need our boiler to be below 54, 53 degrees. Really, we need it to be down in the 40s and 30s. 30s yeah. So so by not controlling the flow rates, <clears throat> you've shot yourself in the foot to start with. And even if you put the world's greatest compensation or, or weather, uh, weather comp type controls on, because you've already moved that DT from 20 to 10, you've already moved it 10 degrees away from the start point, all the weather comp's going to do, even on a warm day, is maybe claim eight or nine or maybe all 10 of them back, but you're still not in condensing mode. And so even though you've got all singing all dancing controls on, you haven't actually achieved anything. I think the really return temperature is going up and down, but the problem is nobody's looking at the return temperature. And that's that's the only one that counts. Flow temperature is irrelevant. It's all about the return temperature. How low is that return temperature? And it's and it's not anything we've ever needed to do up to now because the radiators get hot. We're sort of used to our gas bills. We sort of know how hot the radiator should be. We sort of know roughly what our gas bill is going to be. And so it's sort of OK. And we just carry on doing that. And and the, the other thing to throw in the equation, I know we're not talking about heat pumps now, but at the moment we sort of heat our six kilowatt houses with 30 kilowatt boilers. So we can throw endless energy. We can make as many mistakes as we want on design and we can just keep turning that boiler up or turning the flow temperature up until everything gets hot. Now, when we go on to heat pumps, because of the way MCS is structured, if we've got a six kilowatt house, we're only allowed to fit a six kilowatt heat pump. So we can't afford to lose any of you can't afford to lose anything. And let's not forget that six kilowatt also has to supply all the hot water. So now we have to get things right. This, this, you know, just whop it. Well, I can't say that just, just, you know, get on and do it and throw it all in and, and crank it up and it'll all be fine. That isn't going to work anymore. Not, not at all. We need to be working out accurately <coughs> flow rate going into each room. And then realistically, if you've got the right flow rate, it doesn't really matter what size the rads are. If the rads are too big, they still can't emit too much heat into the room, wasting heat, because we've only got the right amount of energy going into the room in the first place. I mean, really, I think Rob was saying about uh, TRVs, we really should be looking at, at our TRVs as not controlling the heat, but as sort of heat limited. So on the odd occasion, maybe you've got a whole load of people in your front room and they're obviously generating heat as well. Uh, you know, you want your limiter to come in just just to stop it. But really, the TRV, 
the TRV's job is not there to control the temperature, the flow rate and the radiator sizing or flow rate essentially should control the amount of heat in the room. And the other thing about these valves, which is great because the, the valves you're referring to, these pressure independent valves, I love them, but they look just like an ordinary TRV and people just don't get that it's a completely different animal. You know, I, re I, I went somewhere, uh, one of your competitors, I think, um, Dan Foss, I think, we went to a day with them, and they were saying, oh, what do you reckon on this, and what do you reckon on that? And my two bobs were, because I think, right, you need to have this magic valve one end that looks like something new, and just bang the TRV on the other end, so that that's the old bit over there, but this is the new clever bit that's going to balance all our flow. But for whatever reason, all the manufacturers do them together, there must be a good, probably a financial reason for that. And so when a new customer sees one of them, or you know, a new installer sees one of these at the independent, down at his, uh, his old days, and you've got a row of five or six to choose from, and you've got the one at five pound at one end, and the one at 18 mm -hmm. pounds, 20 quid the other end, and we either choose the cheapest one if it's for a landlord, or we choose the middle one if we're trying to wave our moral compass about. But nobody chooses the expensive one. But you don't realise that the expensive one, which is not is only marginally more money, is such a completely different animal. It's a whole new ball game. So we, we, we need to try and get that over as well. Most people don't know what pressure independent valves mean because they, they've never needed to understand any of this. It's not there. It's not there for it's new technology coming on. You know, it just looks like every other TRV that's ever been made. And I think that's a mistake. Not that anybody's interested in my two bobs, but you know, <laughs> you know, it's it's the packaging, I guess, to determine you know what the difference is and to actually make it clear that there this is something that does a completely different job. It does a completely, absolutely, completely different job. Yeah, it does two totally separate. The TR, we all think it's a TRV because it's got a TRV just like everybody, and it's an identical TRV to every shape and size and everything. But that's only one half of it. That that's one half of it. The, the important bit goes on in the other part, the bit underneath. <coughs> it's this automatic flow control, this balancing or whatever you know, so we can actually restrict the amount of of energy going into the radiator, which is the bit we need to do. It, irrespective of pump speed as well kim because that's really yeah, irrespective, important as well so, irrespective, know, of pump speed, irrespective, so, irrespective irrespective yeah. of pump pressure so i say rather than speed yeah. because obviously it's yeah, you were to speed, some of the yeah, manufacturers it, that uh, to do the pumps but you can't adjust uh so again these pressure independent valves they they, they get around that problem it's not it's not absolutely the perfect way to do it but it certainly achieves it i think so it's they worth, will balance that sorry I, I think it's worth mentioning that that um if you think if you can imagine the whole world's energy usage of ele electrical energy usage i mean you know we, we we can't even we can't even fathom how much that would be but a tenth of that so i, so, I mean so 10 percent of 10 percent of that of that is of uh, yeah 10 percent of all of that energy 10 percent of every bit of energy in the in the whole wide world is actually used up by deadheaded pumps it's just bonkers statistic and when you know you really start thinking about it that is a massive massive amount of saving that can be achieved just by getting smaller pumps setting auto bypasses correctly or or uh, or, or, or vt circuits that kind of thing you know that is, which which i'd use in, in in commercial stuff but i mean some of the some of like the big nhs projects that i've looked at and worked with and stuff i mean you know you go in you see some of these pumps and i mean people people are not understanding what an index circuit is for starters. I mean, I, I remember when I was first trying to find out a lot about it, you know, years ago, I was looking it up on the internet and there was just nothing on the internet about, about no. an index circuit. And there's still very little out there now. But I mean, you know, I, I did a project a little while back where there were like 237 um, um, flats in this in this block and I, I designed a new plant room for it. And um, they, they, the, the replacement for the pumps that were in there, I mean, they, 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 they were absolutely massive, like, you know, two foot across, you know, pump, pump inverter heads, you know, on these massive, massive motors on these pumps. And to replace them, these two pumps was, was going to be something in the region of about, I don't know, 120,000 pounds or something. It was a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, and you could actually, you know, I mean, you know, DN150, so, you know, DN150 pipe work, you could see it shaking where there was just so much velocity, you know, and, and head running through these, through these systems. Which causes all erosion. You know the running costs are massive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Fixed speed. I did the replacement, so I went there. I spent a day just pacing out and you know running with a with a you know a, a wheel measure uh, around on the underground car park and everything, working out exactly what the index circuit was to this. And the replacement for these pumps that was that for both both sets of pumps was about ten and a half thousand pounds. I mean the saving was just massive, and it's you know people don't understand. As long as you calculate the index circuit out. Doesn't matter how many other rads are on the circuit; it makes no, no difference. All you've got to do is that's the flow. 
it's not the head you know, it's, it's not the pressure uh, you know the the, the the resistance it's 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 about the flow then so it's it's really bizarre that um that, that, that people aren't well, getting there well just just going on to that rob right in my circuit here so we just had some works st i've still got to complete it all but we've just gone so we had two underfloor heating manifolds at my house each underfloor heating manifold had a pump OK, yeah. so we've just gone. I've ripped it all out because we've simplified it down. We've gone weather compensated with the new heat pump we've had fitted. <clears throat> but we've gone from two. We've gone from two pumps there. There was also a, a shunt pump. OK, because uh, when I, I when I, uh, you know, you got to bear in mind, this was 15 years ago when I started designing all this out and I was relying on other people. So I was relying on manufacturers to do the calculations correct and give me the correct information. Yeah. But actually, now I've got to the point in my career where I, I know all this in, in, intrinsically and I can design it out myself and I've got it, I can get it all correct. So we've ripped out three pumps here, okay, yeah. and we've replaced it with one pump. Oh, one pump good. now does all the under, from here, does all the underfloor heating throughout my house, both underfloor heating circuits, and it, it's flowing at uh, 1.3 meters cubed per yeah. hour, which is, you know, <clears throat> 1300 liters per hour. And yeah. that's all my underfloor heating needs. So when we when we set it up and it's auto, it, the pump auto balances this one, and it, it's running bang on what the actual heat input should be into the emitters. So we know it's we know I know it's perfect because I've done the mass. And it's yeah. really important that we just understand you've you've got to do the mass to set your pump speed correct or know actually what size pump you need. And it's just a miseducation in in our industry that we just chuck these pumps in twiddle the dial and hopefully hopefully it's somewhere near and everything gets hot and that's just we're just we're just doing it wrong and we've not been educated yeah. correctly on how to do it but the starts with the pump once we get the pump right and the flow rate somewhere near then that's when the balancing occurs on the rest of the system and yeah, balancing okay. is setting fl setting flow rates it's not getting everything it's not about getting things hot it's about getting the like kim says the right amount of energy to the right place at the right time that's that's what it's all about and once once you've done that naturally the radiators will all heat up at the same time exactly the same you know and, it, and you know a lot of people say it's about getting the radiators to heat up at the, sa at the right time you know all at the same time the right time and that is true but there's a bit more behind it than you know than, than we think and like i said it's the, the the manufacturers need to help us out here as well because like rob said the pump speed the pumps are too big do you know what i mean the, the, for most domestic properties we, you know when we've got 1550 1560 pumps they're probably Two times too big in yeah. most properties yeah and we and problem is once you've got a, a pump that is too big you're going to struggle to balance with with a normal lock shield you, you need are. something a bit better do you know what i mean you need you need that extra little bit to do it well you need more you need more authority you don't you like deep in thought thing <laughs> <laughs> you going yeah good 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 um so um, <laughs> matt from last week mrhp is back um can we get a link to these TRVs? So um, the guys were talking about the IMI. I believe there's a Danfoss one as well. We are launching an auto balancing valve this year. We're going to share some more information about that um, as we get closer to June. Um, but uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll share that one with you, Matt. Um, but then we've got NMB Plumbing who's asking, do we need uh, pressure independent valves on every rad? Yeah. Yeah, so if you, if you think about it, if you've got a defence mechanism on all the countries in NATO except for the top one, the Russians are going to come around the top one, aren't they? And that's essentially what the water's going to do, uh, just to get it topical. Uh, <laughs> Controversial. <laughs> uh, I mean, essentially, that's what we're doing. We, we, we need, we're protecting the radiator from being over over flooded with, with flow, and so it's an all or nothing thing. But if we have one poor rad that isn't protected, all the water that's coming out the boiler that isn't allowed into the the nine radiators that are protected or governed it's all going to try and slosh its way back through the tenth one so yeah it's, it's an all or nothing thing and so, so not, not including the but the the one that's normally a bypass <clears throat> yeah well the, the, you're going to set the flow rate so you're going to set the flow rate so if you've got an auto bypass that should be not necessarily under the boiler it's traditionally under the boiler but even if you don't use an auto bypass uh, the, 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 bear in mind the TRV and the valve, the clever valve, are two separate things. You're going to take the TRV off the radiator that's got the room statins. That's that's probably going to be your living room. So your living room is going to have the room statin, so it's not going to have a TRV on. You can't have two controls fighting each other. 
but you still you still set the flow rate for that rad so when when the pump overruns, some can go through the bypass uh, and some if you're really clever you can set the bypass and distant and remove from it the amount of energy that's flowing through the radiator because some of it's going to go through the rad and some of it will go through the bypass i mean that's all getting a bit a bit you know your bum a bit doing that it's getting really you know a bit ott maybe but yeah it's all or one and sometimes people say well how about when it's on an s plan when it's on an i plan i mean really we should be putting all this on priority hot water uh, you know because the whole essence of priority hot water is is that we only have high temperature flows when we when we're recovering the cylinder and the hot water which is sort of i don't know maybe 10 percent of the time the boiler's running the other 90 percent of the time then we don't have to worry about high temperatures anyway and so we can push the temperatures right down hopefully now down to sort of 55 degrees yep. uh, if the rads are big enough or use weather compensation or low compensation of some sort to help us now push that down because we're starting off with a flow temperature we're not starting off with 75 we could start off with maybe 60 we could set our maximum flow temperature for 60 and then get and then if we balance it we're in with a fighting chance of getting our dt somewhere around 20 so hey ho we're now down in the 40 so we're in condensing already now we're seriously condensing and now if we apply all the magic uh, controls weather comp whichever way we want to go we can now push that 60 40 maybe down to 50 30 and now, now we're cooking on gas mm. yeah because now our boilers more or less in condensing mode all the time and of course that's the idea of of where we're going with low temperature heating try and force the boiler to be in condensing mode all it doesn't mean we, we, we're not going to balance we still need to balance but it's going to force the boiler to be in condensing mode all the time <clears throat> I get all excited about priority hot water. It's the way forward. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, <mate. laughs> as excited as I do, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I, love this, I love this question that's just come in. Um, yeah. What you're what you're talking about, excluding proportion pressure pumps, used to be included in in City and Gills craft and advanced craft plumbing apprenticeship courses. Yeah, it did. Uh, within the central heating module. So 42 years ago, we're well, showing your age there, wherever you are. Um, <laughs> It is old yeah. Um, it's uh, yeah, 40 years ago when I was was there when I was an apprentice from system design index circuits, uh, pump maps, heat loss, flow rates, etc. etc. Is this type of course content not included in the current MVQ? Or training? Well, I think do you know what I think it is, but it's 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 such a tick box exercise these days, isn't it? It's you know, you turn up your past, that's with anything, you know, that's it's, you know, literally people go and resitting their gas and. You know, they're ECS and stuff all the time. I've heard of people that go, they come in and the the the, 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 the um, instructors actually telling them the answers to put. You know, try 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 box three. You know, try ticking box four. Or, you know, I mean, it's just it's about getting bums on seats and getting money in the bank more than it is about learning, as far as I can see. Which is a bit of a shame. There's, you know, there's, there's there's obviously a lot of people now and a lot of centres that that we we work with quite closely that have, have become more strict and and are not scared to fail people. But, you know. If I go, if I go and reset my gas, which I've got to do next year, you know, I, I want to go there and learn something. I don't want to go there and just sort of have it as an exercise of filling in boxes, you know. Mm, it I is think, a shame. I think the other thing that comes in there is, is that the apprentice comes out, I don't know, 17, 18, 19 years old. He goes into the field to start doing it for real and mm. says to his boss, you know, <clears throat> maybe, can I try and size this pump or whatever? And his boss was saying, listen, mate, you just need one of them red ones, 1560, bang that on, leave it on speed three, it'll be fine. And yeah. that's it. Another guy then has been converted into doing that because that's how he's been shown out. I mean, has anybody ever been anywhere where the pump isn't on speed three? Yeah. I mean, you walk up the stairs towards the airing code and you can hear the water upstairs going around the radar. It's about 200 miles an hour. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and with a DT of one across the radio, you know. Yeah. And... Um, it's a, it's a it's a culture that we, we we tend to learn understandably from what everybody else does well if everybody else is intrinsically doing it incorrect because that's how it's always been done from bef before condensing boilers so this 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 way of doing things you know putting your hands on the bottom of the rads to make sure they're all hot when you've done your balancing that comes from ideal classics and the old cast iron boilers where no one cared about condensing and all you wanted to do was get the rads hot, which was fine but there wasn't a line in the sand when, when the condensing boilers came out nobody put a line in the sand and said right guys you need to know there are some completely different mythology 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 yes that we need to apply now to these new boilers because they're different they're not the old ones these are the new ones but it's, it's all just got lost and so we carry on now and it all gets handed down these old wide tails about no more than three rads off a five what is it a 15 mil pump uh, 50 mil pipe and all that sort of stuff 
and nobody stops to think is it still relevant yeah well it well it isn't s and y plans you know they really should have been knocked on the head when condensing boilers come out what is the point of putting a condensing boiler on an s and y plan it's ridiculous because the ball is not going to condense That's this week, Kim, did you see on the Worcester installers training page, actually, they, they were starting to promote priority hot water, wow. which I was like, I was like amazing, amazing because it, yeah. because so, so many manufacturers have just not lynched onto the fact that this is important, Claire, and that that's the big problem, like the S and the Y plans. I mean, I, I fully understand why they're there because they've been kind of our UK legacy. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. when, when we think of when we think about them and condensing boilers, the two just don't go together. And no. the and the ability for the boilers to have those dual flow temperatures, you know, it, it's just been it's just been such bad, you know, it's been such it's just been overlooked so badly. And you know, when we think about this the other thing about the balancing thing as well, we don't get as well right is that when we're talking about the priority hot water thing we actually need a different flow rate for the yeah. heating system we than we actually do for the hot water recovery yeah, exactly. because yeah. now if we've put a bigger boiler in place to do faster hot water recovery we need a faster flow rate through yeah. the through the cylinder coil which might be a lot bigger actually so you might have a 30 kilowatt coil as as now your recovery coil in your cylinder we actually need 30 kilowatts of flow as well so the, the problem the problem with that is 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 that we kind of need two pump speeds so the way one boiler in particular into gas gets around that is that when it goes for priority hot water recovery the pump speed goes to max okay so we've got that full flow through the through the coil but then once it goes back to space heating the pump speed readjusts itself back down to your settings that you've set it to and then you've got the correct flow rate for the for the heating circuit that you've set so yeah. in a in a lot of systems, you know, when we're going forwards, we've, got, we've not only got to think about balancing the heating circuit, but we've also got to get the flow rate through the cylinder, cylinder correctly right. for that high recovery as well. So we've got to have a bit of bit of thought, make sure the manufacturers of the boilers have actually thought about that and done that as well, because otherwise we're gonna we're gonna be in a bit of a world of pain if we've if we've restricted the system right down or or we've put you know, stad valves, you know, limiting valves on the on the flow pipes, which then go to the yeah. cylinders as well. We're not going to be able yeah. to to, yeah. to achieve yeah. correct yeah. flow yeah. rates for that. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 bonkers. I mean, I, I, most most boiler manufacturers hate me and and, and and heat engineer because we're actually saying less is more, you know. And I, and I've, I've got so I'm I'm not scared about what I'm going to say now, but you know, there is all the other side of it as well. You know, 1.6 million boilers being sold every year in the UK is a, is, is a gravy train that nobody in their right mind wants to jump off. And yet really, <laughs> you know, what, what what we're saying, what we're actually saying is, is that, you know, less actually is more, you know, we don't need the, and, and, and from my perspective, if you do a heat loss calculation on your house and your house is kind of under six kilowatt, six kilowatt or around that, which, which the average UK home is, Frankly, gas boilers are just not suitable for that type of property. TV, yes, TV. It's a bit, and unless they can redesign gas boilers, or they can start putting in district heating to, you know, one one thirty kilowatt boiler will do six houses, no problem. Yeah. You know, and do, and you know, yeah. dig a trench down the back gardens and just put HIUs in each in each place and swap the combis out. Comes you know, back to my old favourite then about who decides who does what. Uh, yeah. and of course, the reason we can't get small boilers is because the boiler manufacturers want us to sell big boilers. Well, uh, I think I, I think it goes deeper than that, Kim. I I, I think you know, you know you've got you've got the you know the V two hundred the Viesman two hundred boiler that, that that you know allegedly goes down at one point nine kilowatt. But I mean the DT squeezed so tight on that to get it down to that 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 uh, that that level. Yeah. Um, is that the smallest gas burner that you can do? Is that the smallest gas valve? And, and get, otherwise, you're going to get a stable um, 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 flame, basically. You know, from from, from anything that is lower than that, because. You know, to my mind, you actually want something for an average house that goes down to watts, not kilowatts. Well, I think they've carried on making the same old stuff because nobody's telling them to make anything any better. I mean, if you consider that the people that, that give them the guidance, what they got to do next are paid for by the people that are, um, you know, making the decisions. The decisions are, are made around what the boiler manufacturers want and not what, what the, you know, what, what we need to, to save us our energy. If you look at the motor trade, we, we went from really dirty, smoky old cars uh, get someone in government said right as from next year it's got to be this standard or you won't sell them and the, 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 the trade did it and then they said from next the next january they've got to be that much cleaner the e what is it the e1 the e2 the e3 i think we're on the e8 now you know the old um 
what do you call it, Poirot thing, where a guy goes in the garage and exhausts himself, sticks a, a pipe in his mouth. You can't do that now. The exhausts are so clean because someone yeah. above was telling them you've got to do this or else. Yeah. And then halfway through it all, they said, oh, while you're doing that, we're, we're going to ban combustion engines. You're going to have to start doing them in electric. Can you imagine the bloke in R&D goes in the next morning and says, right, lads, I've got this email. Anybody know anything about electric motors? Because we've got to start putting them in cars. As <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the heating industry has never had that. The heating industry decides its own destiny. Yeah. If you look at, I mean, I can't, we can't mention any names here, but we all know who they are. If you look at some of these boilers, in 15 <laughs> years, they've achieved nothing. We've gone from 30 kilowatt maximum to 10 kilowatt minimum, to 30 kilowatt maximum, to 8 kilowatt minimum. And what a shower of shit that is. Yeah, you yeah. know, we might as well have just left the old one in there. Mm. Because we haven't progressed at all. We've wasted all this time and effort. I totally agree. I totally agree. I totally agree. Uh, you, you are, it's, you are it's, painful. it's painful. It's painful. It is painful. It is, painful. It is, painful. It is painful. I mean, you got you, you got you got condensing written all over the box, and 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 basically atmospheric coming out of the box, haven't you? At the end of the day. <laughs> that's the, that's the Do you know what? I love this. I love this question there from from this from from guy. Great topic and show from you experts. Don't know about that. Um, it's just very sad that there are 150,000 plus heating engineers, yeah. and only 20 of them are watching this. <laughs> 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 Read the word, <laughs> word, get on the Facebook groups and get on all the rest of it and spread the word and just, you know, because it's the, the maths, the maths do not lie. We all know that. And I think that, you know, as we've kind of touched on, the manufacturers kind of seem to be really right on the back foot with this. And, and, you know, is this the death of gas boilers? Well, it probably is because of the green lobbying and all the rest of it. And, you know, as we've said earlier, eventually we've got to stop burning stuff if we want to do, if we want to do that. But we actually need, we actually realise and we know that we don't need anywhere near the amount of heat that, we, that, that is being sold to oh. us every, every, you know, 1.6 million times every year, you know? Yeah. And let's, it's, let's kind, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a massive compounded problem, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? We, we can't physically go out there and actually buy the products that we actually yeah, need exactly. to install. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so the only, it's no installer's fault ever. It's just the fact that you need the manufacturers just to come on board, listen to what's being said and go, you know what, guys, these guys are actually talking a little bit of sense. What can we do to improve the modulation ratio or bring the smaller boilers down, get them into the watts? What can we do on the, on the balancing side? How can we improve that for installers to make it really easy that you can just go in, set the flow, off you go. You don't have to come back in the depths of winter to rebalance it because you're, you know, it's 20, it's 30 degrees inside the house. And, you you know, how are you going to balance a system when it's 30 degrees? You know, you, you can't, can you? You need to come back in the winter when you've actually got a bit of heat loss. And actually, you know, it's not, yeah, you know, maybe, because yeah. it, we just can't do it. But no one ever does that, do they? You know, if it is middle of summer and you're putting a boiler in, and you're then going, right, I'm going to go and balance your system, Mrs. Jones. Do you know what I mean? And you head off out and it's 30 degrees in the property. How have you balanced it without yeah. something you can actually physically flow set? It's impossible. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, the job out there for us, you know, for the, for the installers, and I, I sympathize with all of you, is that we don't have the products. That, that's, that's kind of some of the what we're talking about. You know, we can try balancing the best we can. We can try and buy the best boiler we can, but still it's not it's not good enough. Do you know what I mean? And everyone's against you because you you go out and buy a radiator. It doesn't even show you the correct DT. Do you know what I mean? It, you know, it's all calculated for old money and we're, we're always hitting our head against it. And the second actually some manufacturers twig and go, you know what, we'll help these guys out because they are making sense and start bringing those really valuable products out that, yeah, they might be a bit more money, but if it's going to save you a bit of time and a bit a bit of effort and you can set it up, commission and go, that's that's ultimately always the best way. But it always, for me, even with the products out there at the moment that can do it, like the boilers with the, you know, you can set the pumps max and min, it's still hard work because the manufacturer's literature just doesn't help you out. No. No. Do you know what I mean? Like, like Kim always says, you know, we've got kilopascals over here, then we've got millimetres, meter head over there, and we've got all Don't sorts, do you know what I mean? And none of it... Water, mate. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just all everywhere. And what needs to actually happen is we all need to have a bit of joined up thinking and go, okay, this is everywhere else, okay, brilliant. Europe and everywhere else wide in the world, we've got one standard. UK standard, this is how we do it. This is all the money that we talk in. These are the products that we actually all need to do the jobs. We we need to get these houses down to watts, not kilowatts, yeah, sure. and off we go. Yeah. yeah. 
I think Talk it's about houses. Let, let's not forget there's another 500 houses being signed off today that won't condense, they won't yeah. modulate. Yeah, running at 80, 60. It's absolutely bloody ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it is. You know, the, the, these house manufacturers and boiler manufacturers and some supply, it's absolutely shameful. And nobody cares because there's no one in a position that you can moan at. Because I've moaned at everybody, even Greenpeace. I even, <laughs> asked them, you know, I even asked them what they actually did for a living, Greenpeace. Because I'm giving them a legitimate thing to go and beat their job about, glue their ears to the M35 for, and they're not bothered. You know, uh, uh, and it's, uh, what can you do? You write to your MP, you write to your Green MP, you know, you write to all these bloody tree others on, on Twitter. I've done all that, and nobody nobody knows what to all. Oh, very sorry to hear that, but you know, I'm more interested in hugging this tree than I am in yeah, doing no. something practical. Do you know what? Uh, I, I used to get, I used to get, I used to get invited by manufacturers to go and sort of like, you know, <laughs> carbon and get speeches and stuff like that. When I, when I pulled it all apart, I don't get, my phone doesn't ring anymore. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't like us, even though the maths are right. You know? it's, uh, it's like, uh, yeah, shut up, shut up, Berridge, and go and stand in the corner. You know? Yeah, well, I, I retired yesterday, mate, so I don't give a monkey's anymore about what I say to anybody. <laughs> Uh, no, laughing, yeah. laughing aside and jo laughing aside and joking aside, it, it, you know, government government are beginning to wake up to this. And you know, I, I, I as much as it, it kind of pained me initially to join the HHIC, I did join the HHIC, and I now realise that they actually serve a very, very good purpose. And 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 it's and it's very, very small baby steps forward because industry is is so resistant to change. So it's 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 quite hard, but if unless you're in the conversation, you're not going to start helping to 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 to, to remedy that you know the problems that we've got, you know system balancing. I'm not trying to push courses or anything like that here, but I mean any, all the guys that are listening, if you haven't been on either mine or Kim's or even Richards, you know get get signed up and come and have a come and have a go. And I mean frankly, if you if if you don't learn anything on mine, I'll give you your bloody money back. I don't care, you know. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I want to just make sure people are always spreading the word and 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 just trying to trying to learn a little bit more about what is going on because it's you know it's. There's nothing to hide here. It's just it's government are going to mandate 55 degree flow temperatures, full stop. That's going to happen. You know, so we're already talking about getting boilers condensing, which is a good thing. But, you know, they, they, they want to push on to, to greener fuels, which is which is brilliant. And it's, it's a noble cause to do. You know, so we're going to have to start using and getting used to used to, to uh, lower temperature systems. So we might as well start working out you know, for bigger rads now. You know, nine times out of yeah. ten, the pipework is going to be exactly what you want. But if you're not balancing, which is the subject that we're on, you're just going to it's just going to be all over the place again and you know you're going to have heat pumps that are you know getting getting cops of one you know or, or, or 0.5 or something like something like that <laughs> it's, you know at this rate of day with 30 pence or 40 pence a kilowatt hour the way it's going it's that's going to be a nightmare you know and, and as you say then the balancing isn't mandated at the moment but it there's talk of it isn't there there's talk of it yeah balancing. well it's in the, it's in it's in the the, the paper that, that i helped um or i had part of, of helping to write on the hhic which is the, the heating up to net zero paper which you could which you can get you can download it from the hhic website and have a, have a look um but it's it's worth having a read about low temperature systems and just see what they said and what has been sent to bays and bays you know being government are actually agreeing with it so you know it's a, it's for me it's a, it's a like whoa it's a, you know good one for the one up for the lads you know yeah 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 rob can you share that yeah, we uh yeah. you got it, I'll send it to me tomorrow so that I can just so that I can share it on the thread with everybody who's watching tonight if they're interested. Yeah, let me yeah, yeah. Well, you, you you guys crack on. I'll just I'll, I'll do it while we're online. But I, I think I mean we all know this low temperature stuff's coming and, and <clears throat> what, what's the one area in the industry, what one set of manufacturers are bound to be making shed loads of money out of this when we all have to upsize our rads? Yeah, because that's the only way we're gonna do it. And yet there's 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 nothing happening. You know, if I was a radiator manufacturer, I'll be out there front and centre now, kicking dustbins, saying, right, you know, this is how you do radiator sizing, this is where you get from, this is why you need this. You know, getting the education behind that so people can buy with confidence. But, I mean, even now, there's, there's no, there doesn't seem to be any movement. Richard said he's noticed something with, uh, with, with Worcester doing priority hot water. I've been banging my drum to some of these boiler manufacturers for the best part of a decade now, saying, look, even if you don't believe me, even if you don't like me, at least tell the guys it can do this the odd guy that's going to pick up and run with it mm -hmm. uh, i'm playing with another boiler company now and then we're, we're trying to get something up and running <clears throat> and i actually said to the guy today look you know you're all very excited about the potential of these new sales because we're going to sort of try to be promote this towards the guys that have been on our courses that understand the importance of priority hot water and low return temperatures but you don't even teach it on your own boiler training courses you don't even tell anybody the boiler can do it 
And so it, it's we, we, we've got these two completely different stories. We've got sales that just want to sell boxes. And then we've got the few people that actually want to try to get people to be able to fit them right. And, and, and it's, I mean, the, the irony of it is it's almost as easy to do it dead right as it is to do it dead wrong. Yes, exactly. You know, it, it, that's the, it's not. What, I mean, what, you know, the, what was the guy? It, it, one of the guys was criticizing a few of us, wasn't he, from Worcester Bosch? Was it Neil Schof, Schofield or someone like that? And he was, he was criticized, he was like having a little dig at us for about the low flow temperatures. Yeah. And I thought, what an irony it is now that Worcester Bosch have literally just yeah. talked about priority hot water and low flow temperatures. And this other guy's going, oh, you know, they're making a big fuss about it. They are in condensing mode most of the time. But, you know, yeah. I don't know what all the big deal about it is. And then all of a sudden there's a little minor shift and they're going, actually, yeah. our, our new 4000 series boiler can do it. And this, that and the other. And we can yeah. do the do the priority and we've got the diverter valve for it and we've got the controls and oh, it's. I thought, what, what a, what a, what a <coughs> funny world it is, you know, because we're all yeah. talking sense. We're, like, like Rob always says, the maths do not lie. We, we're not, we're not lying about this. The science says we're right, and yet, you know, the manufacturer against us because they, you know, they want to sell, sell, sell. Well, that's fine. Let's sell, sell, sell. Well, let's sell good products. Yeah. Well educated people, yeah. you know, well, well educate your installers of what needs to be done. Give them the right tools and set them to task, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? And set them out there at people rather yeah. than just say that it, it doesn't happen and or it happens most of the time, or you know, you, you're doing, you know what I mean? Like I said, we got a boiler change market rather than actually a boiler tuning market. And the tuning yeah. bit is a skill in itself. And if it, you know, you could have a whole career just going out there and putting all the all, all the wrong boilers out there right, you could make a career out yeah. of it. Good. Just yeah. going out there, tuning the boilers to the best of their abilities and saving homeowners money, money. you'd have a yeah. whole career out of it. Yeah. I think, I mean, I can, I can, do it. I can definitely second that. I mean, I, most of my work is commercial, but it's, uh, you know, going into plant rooms. I mean, I don't think I've ever, ever been into a plant room where the, the existing plant that was in there is not more than double what is actually required. Normally, yeah. it's like three or four times more than what it has actually needed. And, of course, that generally comes down to the fact of... of um, of either of either um, copy and paste merchants, you know, or and a lot. To be fair to a lot of lot of designers, there's not a lot of money in in, in designing, and and it, and, it, and it, copy and pasting does go on. But I mean, at least do a heat loss calculation of what you want for the building, and just calculate that out properly. Um, and then the balancing comes down, you know, with with commercial. Obviously, you know, we're using a lot of balancing on each each individual circuit, and there's VT circuits and all sorts of stuff. Um, well, you on, have to, Rob, don't you? You have to. You've got no choice. Yeah, yeah. You have to. yeah. yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I mean the amount the amount of of plant rooms that I go into that are just woefully commissioned. You know, it's you know you've only got to go in there with a, with a, with a, with a um, thermal imaging camera, you know, and start pointing it at a few different pipes and everything. You can see it; it's just bonkers miles out. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The boy when the boiler manufacturers are advertising their wares to us. I mean, I know. So you talk about the four thousand Worcester. Uh, first time in my career, I've actually started to promote Worcester <coughs> boilers because at the end of the day, it ticks all the bo it ticks all the boxes for me. It's a cracking boiler. Probably mate, you can't get it at the moment, but di disregarding that, <laughs> it's a fantastic boiler. Is this the new uh, eight thousand? Is this the new eight thousand? Well, the, the four thousand, four thousand series. Oh, right, okay, right, yeah, I don't know. Boilers. But the irony of it is, is, if you look on the side of the box, all the bits that you and I get excited about, the low modulation and the fact you can adjust the pump, the fact that it will do priority water, none of that is advertised on the side of the box. Because they know that that's at the moment is not what sells boilers, and when I'm when I'm you know trying to preach from my pulpit when I'm doing my <laughs> attempting to do my training days, you know trying to trying to convince the guy that gets a free holiday to Las Vegas <coughs> once a year uh, to go and pick a, a decent boiler, one that's actually going to serve the community better, going to look after the planet, going to reduce the fuel bills, save us from puking and all these other things. They look at you, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. I want to get my hundred pound cash back and me ten free beanie hats and me free trip to Las Vegas. That's it. And 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 they, you know, they'll say, well, it says on the side of the box it condenses. That's all I'm bothered about. I can tell me customer it condenses, so it's not my problem. And I mean, you know, mm -hmm. if, you, if you look at, the, you know, the COVID thing, you know, when COVID came, the, the, the bloody nurses and the national health stepped up to the plate and did their bit. And when we had that crisis with 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 uh, transport and that, the lorry drivers stepped up more or less and you know kept the food. But it's, it's, this is our time, guys. You know, we're we're the heating engineers. We're responsible for this junk not personally it's not our installer fault but as an industry we are the reason we are certainly part of the reason why we're in this quagmire at the moment and so really it's time for us to step up 
and say, right, OK, we've, we've made enough money out of this. We can still make plenty of money out of it, but at least let's try and do it a little bit better now and, and try and get some good return on, on the investment. And also, let's stop this bloody nonsense of 1.9, whatever it is, 1.7 million boilers a year. I mean, that's that's absurd. I mean, I, I, we, I think we all know that boilers that don't condense, the, 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 the heat exchanges aren't washed out with the, the, the condensate flowing through it. And we've all seen pictures on, on Facebook and the like of heat exchanges full of crud and crap inside because they're all running at 80, 90, you know, 80 degrees or whatever. And it, it doesn't do any, just let's just do it right for the next 15 years. Let's just understand what we need to do. It's not difficult. There's no rocket science in it. You don't need 10 decimal places. You just need to understand how it all works, how it all sloshes about inside the system, how we can get the right amount at the right place, get it there at the right temperature, you know, look at our return temperatures all the time, balance the systems up. Um, we, we can make a massive dent in this. Just, just the engineers that want to. I know that's not going to be everybody. I get that. We're all different. and Everyone's got to pay them all. So I get that, you know. And it's easy when you're financially stable to say, oh, we should all do this and we should all do that. I get it. But really, those of us that can do that, we really should put ourselves out to, to try and do it. We've got a responsibility to our grandkids, well, grandkids and, and all of those that come after us to, to try and, uh, you know, not let things get too bad before they hopefully before they start to, to slow down and hopefully stop. Uh, I want the orange box again. Well, there is a level of irony I'm here as well. So I'm, just, I'm just reading the chat. There's a level of irony here, right? So in the chat, it says, a northern head engineer came out to a Worcester Bosch boiler with a split hex. I rectified it by the way of closely, closely coupled T's. The engineer initially wouldn't change the hex, claiming I'd pipe the flow into the return oh. into oh. the same pipe. <laughs> I know, I, know, I mean, it's, where do you go with it? Where do you start? I mean, what, can you say? what can it's you like say? What can you say? It's like trying to turn an oil tanker, isn't it? It's like trying to turn an oil tanker. With, was he 10? Did the, was the guy 10 years old that come out to it? I don't know. Did he? I, I don't know. But um, we are battling. You know, the truth it is, is we, we, you know, we, we've, we've got a massive uphill struggle. It, there's no doubt. There's loads of guys out there already who are top of their game and, you know, Heat geeks, eco technicians, everyone else who came up from the ground up. We all self taught each other. We all did the courses. We all helped each other out. We all learned from the ground up. Actually, all this is rubbish. What we're doing right now, and you realize how bad a heating engineer you actually are. Okay, yeah. that's the reality. Okay, you're out there, you're, you're putting boilers in, doing nice pipe work. You think you're doing a great job, you're not. That's the reality. I, I was doing the same. I was doing lovely installs, I was putting them all in. Didn't go through half the settings, I'll be really honest, right? And then actually myself and my dad were doing a couple of jobs and they just weren't working. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? And that was when I, I was like, right, there's actually something I need, I'd actually need to sit down. And once I actually sat down and worked it all out, actually it was the heat exchange resi resistance. There was, just, there was just too much flow. We we're expecting way too much needed hydraulic separation. Like I say, closely spaced T's or low loss header would have done the job great. But if you don't know, you don't know. No. If you're out there and you're doing small properties anyway and you're chucking them in, half of them are going to work, but they're just not working efficiently. It's not it's not your fault. It's the way you've been trained or how you've come into the industry. That that guy earlier that said about apprenticeships, everything else, lots of guys come into this industry not through apprenticeships, not through college. They've either got referrals or they've got a job with their mate who's a plumber and then he's, he's worked with him for a few years and then he's... Yeah. He's like, oh, now he's got his own van and he goes out there on his own. He's never, he's never done the training. It, you know what I mean? He, he's learned. The problem is, like, like I said, when you, when you come out of college and you go and work for someone and they're like, right, we've got a day to get that in. Well, well I need two days to do it because I've got to balance it. I've got to flush it. No, mate, you've got a day. What, what are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. And if it's a building company, you've got half a day. If it's a new build. You got half a day. Well, that's what I mean. I mean, my cousin, my my cousin, he won't mind me saying this, right? But when he was out there, when he first started out in the industry, on his own, not in the industry, but on his own out there, on his own, self-employed, he was doing building sites. He was doing like 10 boilers a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's paid by the boiler. Yeah. 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 Sense. That's the reality. Yeah. You know, the like reality. I said, we're, we're all in, we're all, we're all in very privileged positions because we've all, We've all got the time. We're a bit older. We can we can tweet. We can play about. When you're on the tools, you've yeah. got to have a set form. Yeah. And like I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. tools yeah. to allow you to do that job in the quickest time you know time scale that you've got. 
But with, yeah. without those tools, you're going to bugger about with a lock shield for ages because the pump speed's too fast. And you, you know what I mean? And it's such yeah. hard work sometimes, and it doesn't need to be. And that's kind of, I think, with, with a balancing thing, like I said, with the, with the auto balancing valves, better technology, smaller pumps, boiler manufacturers listening to us, actually, what needs to happen on that side. You know, it will get there, but it's just an up, it's going to be an uphill struggle. And to get some of the older boilers, like Kimbo always goes, the ideal logics, the things like that, that don't have the pump speed adjustments, you, you're going to have a hard time unless you've got these pressure independent valves. You're going to have a real hard time getting those systems at the correct flow rates. And, you know, it's going to be really tough. Guys, it's been brilliant. It's been such a great session. Um, keep, um, keep, we'll keep you posted on our um, auto balancing valves that are coming. Um, thank you for your time, guys. The, the, the viewers and everyone who's watching seems to have really, really enjoyed it. It's been really interactive. There's loads and loads of chat on the on the group. Um, please post your trainings on the on the thread as well. So, because there's a lot of people who are asking about it. So make sure you post what you do in terms of training. Rob, Kim, I know you've done it before. Richard, post yours as well. Um, and obviously, summary is balancing is mega important now. It's going to be even more important in the future. So um, let's get it done to... Uh... <laughs> Sorry, I've, just, I've, just, I've just seen this. these two posts from AJ. <laughs> My last gas ACS reassessment was two questions. Name and an I. And I that's something up. And I bet you got. I bet you got four. Go, I bet you got four goes at that. You've passed. You've passed. <laughs> ah, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you oh. off. Now. I'll just no, that's okay. Through these. <laughs> but thanks oh. all for your time. Thanks for everybody watching. I think we've covered everything and then some. And uh, it's been brilliant. Hey, all of you, who makes these magic TRVs? So I am I make them. Uh, Dan Foss uh, make them. Drayton are just about to make them. When did you say they were due? June? June, yeah. So June, we'll keep uh, you posted, let me know more about that. Honeywell Can't apparently wait to get hold of some of them, Claire, so that'd be good. We'll get um, hold of some of those for all of you. Might, it might be worth thinking about doing another one of these, Claire, but on, um, on, on water quality. Water quality? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. let's ch let's chat, Rob, about other things we could do because yeah. I'm sure there's plenty that we can cover. Domestic sure. priority, hot water, or whatever it is you were yeah. talking about <laughs> earlier. That I've got no idea what it is. <laughs> I'll rest my case, <laughs> it's obviously something that you feel really passionate about. So uh, maybe I'm not the only one who doesn't know what it is. Brilliant. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. All right, thanks, guys. Everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Thank thanks you. Thanks, thanks everybody. Bye now.